Okay, so Claudia was before. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Adobe Live Holiday Special. How is everyone today? If you were in the last stream and are hanging out now, thanks for staying with me. And if you're just now tuning in, thank you for joining me. I see we already have a lot of people having a ton of fun in chat. So I'll, uh, we'll check that in just a moment. But we do have a really awesome lineup today. So make sure that you do come and hang out with us all day and all week. Um, there's a bunch of fun things coming up, all holiday themed. It's going to be great. Uh, so for those who don't know me. I'm Shauna Lynn. I'm a lettering artist, children's book illustrator, well, lettering artist and children's book illustrator uh, located in the Chicago area. I work out of my home studio with Teddy Bear. He's made his appearance, so he's good to go. Um, and yeah, I am working on my first children's book. It's the finals are going to the printer on Wednesday, and I'm excited to share that with people when it's when it's ready to go live. Um, I see we've already got, we've got Rin in the chat. We've got Justin, Wade, Gareth, Alana. Hello, Alana, how are you? Umicorn, Clever, hello everyone. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I love the holidays. Um, I have a, I currently have a black Santa hat going on. So like I am on brand. Um, so before we get started, let's check out what our creative brief is for today. And also if you are uh, hanging out on YouTube, please join us over here on be.net slash live because that's where the fun is and that's where the chat is that I'm reading. And oh, you wanna get down? Okay. All right, bye Ted, here's a cookie. Um, so come join us over here cause that's where I'm going to be reading the chat. And everyone's really excited cause we have Teddy. Um, so before we get started, let's check out what the creative brief is today. We are going to be making paper cut ornaments. Um, so I've pulled together just a really quick inspiration deck. There's a couple ways to go about creating these uh, paper cut ornaments, such as die cut or dimensional. And I even went the extra step and made them. They're a little sad looking, but I made them. So like, here's your dimensional one and here's your die cut. Ta-da. Um, if you have a Cricut, it makes it really easy to cut things out because that's what I did, because I can't cut with scissors very well. So die cut ornaments are ornaments that are just cut out in the shape of whatever it is. So holiday sweater, a wreath, a snow globe, what have you. Um, and then a dimensional is one that is what it sounds like. It is a 3D object um, created with paper. There are also different ways we can go about it. We can do a vintage classic theme, we can do a modern theme, or we can do an illustrated theme. And I am really leaning towards the illustrated theme. I think it's really fun. It works with my work, so that's what I will be doing. Um, and then there's some other ideas like you can throw in later with this with these skills. Um, you can do like a garland, you can do a little paper wreath, you can do all kinds of like little things like you can if you with the dimensional, you can create a little tree to go on your desk. There's possibilities are endless. So as you do these, do make sure to like share these on, on Instagram or on social media and tag me and tag Adobe Live Holidays because I want to see what you make. 
Um, and Wade has mentioned in the chat, we do have a CC library of things for you. So I have made sure to include some templates you can use. There's PSD ones, which you can open in Fresco. There's also PNG ones, which you can load into Fresco um, or Photoshop, whichever program of your choice. I will be using Fresco today. And I've also included a selection of a few of my favorite brushes that I use that I've made. Um, you can use whatever brushes make you happy. Kyle has a fantastic assortment of brushes. The gouache ones will be perfect for this sort of project. And let's get started. But yeah, they're free for you to use. So I'm going to switch programs here. There we go. So I'm going to start with the ugly sweater option, um, just because I think that's going to be really fun. And I think it's going to be cute. I think if you guys want to throw some colors into the chat, I'll like use color suggestions from you guys. Um, we have that yeah, people are fresco hype. Yes, Wade, fresco hype. I love fresco. I really do. It's a fantastic program. It's very easy to use. Um, and I use it for pretty much everything. So as we get going, I want to hear like, oh, Barbara says, it's a good thing my Maltese didn't see your pet. She'd be barking. Aw. Yeah, he's he doesn't look at like the camera. He doesn't understand it, so he doesn't like interact very well. But he's he's just there. Um, he's a cute boy. We got greetings from New Zealand. We have hi all from Chicago. Hello, neighbor. Um, we have Canada. Goodness, everybody, you're so great. Ruth says, "Oh, can we illustrate Teddy instead?" I already have done that. Um, I could put him on the sweater. <laughs> we could put we could put Teddy on the sweater. That could be really funny. Um, but yeah. So let's get started. Um, we've got Matthew suggested purple, Adnan suggested red. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to start. So what I'm doing is I loaded in a PNG layer, so it's transparent and I can draw under it. No problem. And then eventually when I turn it off, I will have just the sweater, but you can use these lines in order to cut out your, your ornament. So I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to grab my brushes. Unfortunately, I did not load in the ones that we were using today. Shame on me. Um, but the one that I'm going to use to start is the Adobe Gesture brush that I made. It says, I think it believe it says SP Gesture brush. So that's the one I'm starting with. I knew there was something I was forgetting to do. Uh, let's see. All right, so we, let's start with the red. I really think the red's going to be nice, but we're going to do like a like a slightly muted red. And I'm just going to start coloring it in because my style is this really coloring book scratchy style and it works really well. But and then while we're doing this, Teddy on a sweater would be adorable. I agree. I, I have made Teddy into a pin and I've made Teddy into a patch and I actually found one of the pins in a backpack yesterday. Um, one of my favorite winter holiday traditions is going to downtown Chicago and toting my skates into downtown, which is just the most cumbersome thing ever, um, and going ice skating. And so yesterday I was downtown at the Maggie Daly Ribbon with a skating friend who we started talking during the pandemic beginnings. And so yesterday was the first time that we had actually met in person, which was a lot of fun. And so I am, I am very sore today um, because the ribbon goes up and down and you're up on, you go uphill and downhill. It's not the biggest like grade going up or down, but it's enough that you can feel when you're going up and you can feel when you're going down. Um, and the ice gets really choppy. So that's like, I mean, that's one of my favorite traditions and ice skating in the winter, we'd come up here for Christmas. Um, growing up, I, I grew up in Florida and we would come up to an area called Glenview for Christmas time to visit my grandma and visit my extended family. And so every Christmas, my parents would take my sister and I ice skating. Um, and we'd go over to the Glenview ice arena, which it's, they've since demolished and rebuilt it. So the one that I skated at as a kid is no longer there. Um, but I was there up until about two years ago. And when I went after moving up here, it smelled exactly the same, which was wild to me. Um, but they used to take me ice skating and that's kind of like what fueled that passion. And I just sort of have never stopped. I quit quote unquote quit in high school, but I was still skating. I just wasn't taking lessons and practicing. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, that's, that's one of my holiday traditions that I have always kept up. And one of the ones I do, cause 
the holidays for me are fun because it goes Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas Eve, mom's birthday, Christmas Day, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, my birthday. Um, so there's just a lot that happens in about three months. But by the time people get to my birthday on January 4th, usually everyone's pretty like, you know, partied out. So I usually take the day off and I just go to the ice rink and I skate and I get a piece of red velvet cake and I'm happy. Um, Paloma says, I haven't been ice skating in so long. It sounds fun. It, I, I mean, I love it. I've stuck with it for 20 years. So, I mean, I, I really enjoy it. Um, and there's a huge skating population up here, which is great. Like I can throw a rock and hit a rink in any direction. <laughs> um, and Namisha says, uh, my daughter does ice skating. Christmas in Chicago is fun. Oh, how fun. What rink does she skate out of? If, if you're comfortable saying what rink does she skate out of? Cause I'm out of Gurney. Since you're in Chicago, you know where, you know where that is. And Jack says, I grew up on the South side of Chicago and took ice skating lessons. I feel like if you grew up in the Midwest, like it was a thing, like you had to learn to skate. And I grew up in Florida, so I didn't start until I was nine. Um, but skating up here, I mean, I, I'm there three, four times a week sometimes. Uh, Ruth says, Sean, I just realized you're wearing a black, black Christmas hat. So original. Yes, I am on brand. I, this, and this hat is a little too big for my head, but like it's solid black and I love it. Um, what are you guys, like, what are your guys' traditions? Like for us, we have, uh, three Christmas trees right now. That's our thing. We growing up, we always had two and, uh, oh, Kate says shout out to a fellow one for birthday. Yay. Hello, fellow birthday, birthday twin. There's a few of us, um, in the, in the design world and stuff that share a birthday. Um, Oh, Barbara, you have a cousin in Gurney and a sister in Glenview. How fun. Um, yeah, so we have we have two Christmas trees, technically. And then mine is is here in the basement. Um, mine, my tree is themed in the theme is Starbucks, Disney, and plaid. <laughs> so it's like Starbucks, Disney, plaid. And then there's like one random ornament. Oh, and ice skates, because there's ice skates all over it, because I always get gifted ice skates. Um and so one of the, so on my tree, like I only have one like rogue ornament and it's the haunted mansion <laughs> and it's the three hitchhiking ghosts. You press a button and it plays the opening, um, when hinges Creek in doorless chambers section. And I absolutely love the freaking ornament. Um, but upstairs we have two trees and one is a, what we call the toy tree. And the toy tree, I will share to Instagram at once it's, we're, it's still in the process of like being organized and stuff. But so the, the, the toy tree is every ornament that we have been gifted, have made, have collected or inherited. Um, that it, so some of these ornaments are like uh, older than me. Some of them are like 50 years old, but it's ones that my dad grew up with on his Christmas tree. And then we've got like ones that we've you know collected or we've been gifted my little sister and i used to make ornaments all the time we had one christmas where i brought home a bunch of blank glass ornaments that i picked up at michael's and paint and we all just sat as a family and we painted ornaments so those are on the tree and then what my dad has done because they are the colored lights what he has done is he's converted some of these lights uh into moving ones so there are things spinning and moving on the tree. And then he's got this collection of animatronics all along the bottom. Um, I will take a video tonight because I think it might have been, it may have been organized by now, but like, I mean, he's got like one, two, three, seven, at least seven or eight animatronics that circle the bottom. Um, <laughs> it's a lot. Like we have almost no branches to put more ornaments. So it's really, almost comical. Um, and then the other tree is the one that we have always called the crystal tree. And the crystal tree is consists of white lights and ornaments that my mom inherited from her mom. Um, so really pretty, just like glass ornaments and things. And then my mom collected Waterford 12 days of Christmas ornaments, uh, for 12 years. Yeah, obviously 12 years. Um, when I was really young. So she, ordered she's had two she's got two sets of them because her plan was she didn't think ahead she should have she's like I should have done three because 
once I give these to you girls, like I'm not going to have any, I'm going to lose 24 ornaments. Um, but she bought, she did it so that my sister and I would each have a set of these really pretty crystal water for 12 days of Christmas ornaments. Um, and then every year I buy her the Swarovski uh, snowflake ornament of the year. So, which is currently sitting like in the other corner of this room in a box because the crystal tree is not up yet. Um, but that one's really pretty. And so, and we always grew up with like, those were the two trees. And then of course now we have my tree. And then we're actually technically a four tree house this year because um, we have a nice front porch and it's cold. So you don't have to worry about things really drying out. So we went to my sister, my dad, her boyfriend, and my mom and I all went to the this little um, tree store, outside tree farm thing. I don't know. It's, they were selling Christmas trees. And we went, we picked out one as a group. Um, and my sister's boyfriend is very tall. So he was like, we need a tree as tall as him. Like that was the, that was the barometer there. Um, and so we have that on the front porch and it's, it's very pretty, but that one just sits out and it's just got a, a string of lights on it. And that's it. It just smells good when you walk up. Um, okay. So we've got Amisha says twin rinks in the suburbs. Okay. I've not been to twin rinks. I, I skate out of Gurney, which is now like a hockey rink. They only tolerate the figure skaters. Um, I'm closer to Ple I'm close to Ple Pleasant Prairie, and then I'll sometimes skate out of Glacier. I've got friends that skate out of Oakton and McFetridge. So, and then I know I'm sure there's people I know that skate out of Glenview and stuff, but Glenview does not allow ice dance, so I will not go there right now because I can't practice things if I go there. I can, but I can't practice the thing I would need to practice. Sandra says, I visited Chicago for a school competition. I loved it. Hope to go back someday. It is, I love this city. I'm an hour north of the city, but like, I love it out here. This to me has always felt like home. So moving here, it just felt like I was going home. It didn't feel like I was leaving home. Um, Mercurial says, we have one tree, no ornaments, save for the cat attack alarm bells. I that you hang on the lower branches. And when they jingle, I know there's about to be a cat problem. Oh my God. Okay, that's funny. Uh, Nimisha says, I make paper quilling ornaments and sell on Etsy. Oh, that's beautiful. That's really pretty. I'd love to see that. Please share that with us. Um, nursery, that's yeah, tree nursery. It wasn't, wasn't it actually it wasn't really like a nursery though. It's like an abandoned shack. And then behind the abandoned shack is these, or just trees that have already been cut down and are ready to go. So I, I don't question. It's right next to a pub. I mean, it's it's a little it, it's a little weird, but it works. Um, Kate says this is their first Christmas with a cat. Oh gosh, we have a we have a golden retriever who is just love her but she doesn't realize that she's not a small dog and her tail is huge and I can't tell you how many times we have to be careful with the Chris with the crystal tree because her tail has almost knocked ornaments off because she gets so excited and her tail is just like I'm gonna do whatever I want um okay next color I'm thinking should we do like a gold or should we like go to the purple I think purple was kind of fun because that was suggested earlier Oh, that's a little too, that's, that's, that's too much of a contrast. Let's try. Yeah, we'll do this. This will be, this will be kind of fun. Eh, actually, I don't know. How do you guys feel about that purple? Joshua says, I really love this sketchy style. What was the brush you're using? I actually provided the brush for you guys. It is in the CC library under the folder labeled Shauna Lynn paper ornaments. Um, I forgot to load them into my app beforehand, but it's the same ones that I've, uh, you, that I'm using, but this one is called, um, SP gesture brush, SP gesture brush. Um, and all it is is just, I have it set to about 48. And I just draw back and forth. So it looks like a colored pencil. Um, Rin says, I have a small holiday tradition where I bring out this old fashioned animated bells music box at the beginning of December each year. It has a beautiful ice cream stain with a starlit backdrop. Oh, I love that. And I saw someone else mention they have a train that goes around their tree. Um, 
trying to think what else we we do oh we have um you know those really pretty vintage ceramic trees uh it's like it's a trend that's come back and you can find them in the you can you can find them actually in a lot of antique stores especially this time of year um is this brush compatible with photoshop yes these are abrs you'll be able to use them in photoshop or fresco and potentially procreate but i don't know for sure how well they work but um and i'm using an ipad for this so what was I saying? Oh, the vintage ceramic trees. We have one that was my grandma's and we leave it out year, year round because we can't, we don't like the idea of it potentially breaking if we like store it somewhere. So that sits out year round in the, in the dining room. Um, and then what else do we, I don't know, like what, what were like the traditions you guys have had when you were kids? Cause you know, I'm going to run with the purple. I'm just going to run with it. We're going to see how this goes. Um, Nimish just says, I'm not sure if I can share it here. Thank you for asking. I'm going to, I'm, I want to save it at least so that I can look at it later because I love paper quilling. I think it's beautiful. It's a beautiful art. Um, one of the things we used to have when we were kids was if it snowed, cause we'd be at my grandma's house out back. She had like, it was, I'm going to see if I can draw it real quick. Like she had these huge sliding glass doors. So this was like separating this is the dining room this is the living room and this just was a little wall that kind of separated so you had these two sliding glass doors and then there was a patio out here and then you could see the kitchen window was right here and so and then of course you know big backyard and if it snowed we would wake up in the morning and there would be sleigh tracks and there would be reindeer tracks now I am almost 34 years old and my dad still will not tell me how, it, how they managed to do this because I can't figure it out. And his, his see every time he just goes, it was Santa. I'm like, I'm almost 34 years old. If you're a child watching this, Santa is absolutely real. Um, but yeah, so Santa would come and leave tracks in the snow and I still have no idea like how it was accomplished, but it's like the magic of, of Christmas that has always stuck with me. Um, it waits as LOL and Paloma says, I love that. Yeah. It's, I, I wish I could find out how it was done because I would like to do it to cousins and things, but, um, I don't know. Yeah. I'll, I'll convince him one day. Maybe, maybe he'll write it down and he'll surprise me like years from now. Um, yeah, Rin says, yours is from, oh, you're, you have a, one of the uh, ceramic trees from Cracker Barrel. So it's not a true antique, but your grandmother gifted it to you over a decade ago and you love it to pieces. I would consider that an antique. I mean, it was gifted, you know, it's gifted to you. Ours is, uh, I feel like my mom said she may have got it in like the eighties. My grandma did. So it's not like old, old, but it's older than me. Um, I have one. I have a, I have a small one that my mom bought, got for me because her reasoning was your grandma would have wanted you to have this and it's a ceramic tree, but it's got Disney characters all over it. And I love it. Cause I am a child. Rin says, that's such a wonderful story. Alana says, that's so adorable. Sky says, I'll be pondering how he accomplished these snow prints all day long. Yeah. I've been, I've been trying for 30, almost 34 years and I still can't. So if you think of anything, let me know. Um, all right, I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to like a cream color, I think. I mean, this is going to be ugly, ugly. Cause like I would normally like to, you know, probably do like a pretty Christmas sweater, but I think it's fun to do something a little different. Let's see. We'll do this green. We're going to live up to the true, like ugly sweater trope. And then. Cause I, if I can finish this one in 10 minutes, we can do one other, or we can do a different, um, style. Cause if you guys want to work along, I do have the templates for you guys. And I included the die cut templates. Um, but I also threw in a dimensional one and I have to update it a little bit because three doesn't work as well as like four would have in that, but I tried, um, But yeah, 
Clever says, I know how to do prints in the snow. Can't spoil it though. Uh, Lauren says, my mom has that ceramic tree. One of the bulbs is out. Ours, the star like broke years ago. So I went on Amazon and I found it. I found a replacement for the star. I'm trying to think like what other traditions did we have? Or do we have, we do um, for dinner, we do standing rib roast because that's what my grandpa used to do in my mom's family every year. And we used to do turkey. And then one year my mom was like, I really want to try doing standing rib roast. And then that's what it's been every year. Um, with the exception of probably this year because everything is very expensive right now. Uh, wait. Anand says, which link are you sharing? There's no folder and the folder has nothing inside. If if the stuff didn't show up in the folder, please let me know because I I've been throwing it in there all morning. Um Kathleen says, maybe they put on skis and use something shaped like a hoof to make the reindeer tracks. That's possible. That's very possible. There were probably skis in my grandma's house. She had a lot of random things. Um Like I said, if you guys are hanging out over on YouTube, like we're having conversation over on behance.net slash Adobe Live. This is where the fun is, where the cool kids hang. Um, we're gonna do, we're gonna do a full green sleeve. Why not? Do, 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 do. Um, okay, everyone's confirming you can see the files. Okay. Sweet. Um, and if anyone has questions about this, like, please let me know, because I'm happy to discuss more of like fresco in general. Like right now I'm using, um, what's what I've called in the, in the brushes I gave you SP gesture brush. Um, and there's this little toggle up here where default, it's just a little button, um, and if you want to use your brush as an eraser, you can just put tap your finger and hold it and use it as an eraser, or you can double tap it. And if it's an inner circle like that, it also is an eraser, or if it you tap it again and it's the outer circle, it's the brush. Are you in the correct folder, Adnan? Did I put it in the correct folder? Wade, can you confirm, please? I think I put it in the correct folder. Okay, everyone says they're seeing the file, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna panic. We're just gonna keep going. And you know what? I may change this purple. I think I'm gonna change it to like a pink or something crazy. Not crazy, but something a little different because the purple feels like it's vibrating a little too much. Lauren says, thank you for the stencils and brushes. You have a meeting to go to, you'll rewatch later. Thank you for joining us. I greatly appreciate you popping in. Uh, make sure you share your, share what you make. I wanna see it. There, there, okay. All right, cool. Um, hi Masood, how are you? So if anyone's just joining in, we are making paper cut ornaments. This is a great way to add like some really nice, you know, handmade touches to your tree. You can use this to also make things like garlands, um, which is something I've used. I've done this technique for like hang tags and all kinds of things. So it is, it is fun. It is a fun technique to use. Um, and I just use an adjustment layer you can now, or a clipping mask, you can now do clipping masks in Fresco. So I created a new layer and then I hit this little button right here that has the square with the arrow pointing down and that will turn your layer into a clipping mask. So anything you draw on that is going to be limited to what is below it on that, uh, what is on the layer below it. Um, Shannon, are you using your finger or a stylus? I'm using an Apple pencil. I am working on an iPad. I have this like fancy stand that I got so that I don't have to stare downwards and hurt my neck because, you know, it's important to take care of your body. Um, and so this stand has been a, a huge lifesaver. 
Hi, Perva, how are you? Uh, Joshua, I'm curious what your thoughts are on the future of illustration. I think we know there has to be a certain amount of personal style and staying current on trends to succeed. Um, yeah, it's it helps to be able to do multiple styles, um, but it also, you know, finding your own style definitely helps and being able to adapt that to what is popular is, is a talent. Um, I ended up developing a lettering style that I do that isn't really marketable, unfortunately. Um, I love it and it works great for things like greeting cards. And that's, that's often what I use my lettering for these days. Um, but I also am able to do it in, I'm able to simplify it a bit more the way I do it for children's books. So the book that is releasing next year, it's called the monsters on the broom. Um, there, anything that is a sound is hand lettered. Everything else is going to be a font, um, that matches the style, but anything that is a sound I will be, or have, um, cause half the pages are submitted already, um, hand lettered. Can we see the stand? Yeah, let's, uh, yeah, we'll switch to the um, big camera real quick. Um, so the stand is this like really nice little thing. It was on Amazon. I can share a link on Twitter later, um, but it just like it, it's magnet. So your iPad just magnets right to it. So it's really stable and you can adjust whether it's like upright or tilted. Um, so it kind of looks like a Mac stand, which is cool. But it works really nice because I'm almost, um, I'm almost level with it. It's, it doesn't look like it, but I am, I don't have to tilt my head down all that much. So my neck muscles and things have actually loosened up a lot in the last few weeks because I've been using this instead of staring downwards, but it's like, I, I love it. It's a fantastic, uh, it's a fantastic piece uh, of equipment. They also have something called a sketchboard pro, um, but I don't have desk room to use that. So I don't have that, but I've seen that works pretty well too, for a lot of people. Um, okay. What should the main, like, what should this main thing be? We were saying like Teddy's face. So I'm still game to do Teddy's face, but I want to hear what everyone else's suggestions are. Marina says, I'll need a better, a bigger stand for my Cintiq 16. Yeah, it's, I have a, I have the 24 inch Cintiq, which is really good lifesaver for my body. I just don't sit at my desk as much these days. Uh, Joshua says a snow globe. A penguin, a giant ornament. Teddy all the way, jingle bells, jingle bells, Teddy all the way. Um, yeah. Let's do little hearts here because. And obviously like you don't have to make this an ugly sweater. Like you can make it something really pretty too. This is just kind of a fun, get really, you know, just like get ugly with stuff, things. Teddy with reindeer antlers. A rabid deer. Let's not. We get deer in our backyard though. It's really fun. Last year they they would like parade through the yard and walk past my window. Okay, so we've got that little dots here. All right, so everyone's, okay, so it's like Teddy, 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 a penguin. Um, are there any playbacks of these live state? Yeah, all these are recorded, so you'll be able to play back all of these. We've um, only had, I believe, one other so far. We had Claudi doing a greeting card, I believe. Okay, so if we're gonna throw Teddy on here, we're gonna go for it, so. Let's 
gonna see how this goes. He's he's over hidden behind a bunch of stuff, so I don't have a reference in front of me. Right now he's like extra fluffy. Let's see, he's got a little star on his head, so we got to keep the white here. And then, wow, this is terrible. I can't like do my dog without any reference. All right, he's got his little bandit mask. He's got his nose. And lately his tongue has been sticking out. So he's got a little tongue now. silly looking dude. So just a little bit here to give him a little. And yes, his eyes go different directions. So this is an accurate representation of him. And then someone said antlers. So we're going to throw some antlers on the dude. Let's do a red headband. This has easily got to be the ugliest drawing I've ever done of my dog. Paco says, oh my God, that Teddy illustration. Yep, ta-da. Um, let's add some little stars and then we will move on to the next one because we still have about like 20-ish minutes, give or take. Um, so I'll probably pop over and do like a vintage style ornament. I think that might be a fun one to finish on. Like I said, if you guys make your own, share them. Um, because I would love to see what you make. You can tag me at Shauna Parmesan and hashtag Adobe Live Holidays. All right, so we've got Teddy. Okay, I love it because it's stupid. <laughs> like, this is so stupid, but I love it. Um, yeah. Okay, so we have our ugly sweater. And I will give you these. I'll give you all of you these if you want them when we're done. Um, because why not? Uh, no, I want to open the. This is just personal preference. I gave um, two formats for these. So you have horizontal and vertical. And that's just because I personally like to draw vertically on the iPad. But if anyone likes to draw, um, or I like to draw horizontally on the iPad. But if anyone likes to draw vertical, that option is there. Um, Paloma says, I feel like you have to get this sweater made now. Oh God, I, pr I, I would, honestly, I probably would. Um, all right, I'm gonna make a color palette real quick because, oh, I'm gonna switch my brush. And go back to that gesture, that gesture brush we were using before. So we're gonna go with that. And then we're gonna use green. And let's go for, Gold. 
and then red blue. Okay, so here's the colors I'm gonna try and use for this. Um, would love to rock a teddy sweater for a virtual holiday party this year. I mean, okay, so like technically there's a way I could make this happen and it's through like an all over print. So maybe I'll do it. We'll see, we'll see. If there's enough, if there's enough people asking, I'll do it after I'm done with deadlines. Um, Justin says, ah, oh, Fresco. I, dude, I love Fresco. Um, okay, I'm gonna start with this blue because I think that's a good one to start with. I'm gonna increase the brush size because I have a lot of space I need to cover. Um, Ruth says, I wish I could draw my dog on this sweater illustration, but I'm so bad at drawing. Did you see what I just put out? <laughs> I do dog portraits and I drawing my dog is the hardest portrait ever. Um, everyone's going to make it, make it happen. Um, another one of the things we used to, we used to try to do, um, porch, a, a group portrait of all the dogs, um, in front of the tree, which at the time we had four dogs. Um, we had my sister's golden, my mom's two Yorkies and Teddy, um, and trying to coordinate four dogs to all look at the camera at the same time. There was some special Photoshopping done at times. Um, but man, did they would all get so grumpy because we'd be like, no, you sit, you stay. You look at the camera and you stay. Um, we don't do that anymore. It's too hard to coordinate all the doggies. And we've, we've since lost one. She passed last year. Um, so we could coordinate three probably, but uh, we don't, we don't try anymore. What other, like, what other, what, what are some of y'all's traditions? Like, do you have like a, a thing you do every year? Do you have a song you always listen to? Um, for us, like we, you know, we just celebrated Thanksgiving and one of our, our Thanksgiving tradition is um, we get up, we have cinnamon rolls for breakfast. Dad starts cooking around like 11 noon. The bird goes in, um, into the oven. I make the gravy. So once the bird comes out of the oven is when I jump on gravy duty and I use my grandfather's recipe. Um, and then we sit at the table. We all say what we're thankful for. There's, there's tears, there's crying. Um, because that's just, that is just how our family is. And, um, then we go and clean up, get pie out. And then we fix our pie and sit in front of the TV and we watch planes, trains, and automobiles. And then we also play this song called Last Train Home by Pat Metheny that plays at least once every year. And it's it works for Thanksgiving and it works for Christmas. Everyone says that would be fantastic. Next time you could wear the sweater on stream and be like, we made this thing. Um, Shannon, could I use Fresco on my iPhone? You have a, oh, you have a Yorkie. What kind of, do you have like a bit? So uh, we had a really big Yorkie and we have a mini Yorkie. We have like a nine pounder and then we had a 25 pounder. We're not entirely sure that the 25 pounder was a purebred. We were told she was, but we don't think she was. Um, the mini one though is, and he is, he is, um, nine pounds of attitude. Tears, ways is tears of joy, right? Yeah, I mean it's good tears. We we cried less this year than we did last year. Last year was hard, um, but this year it was it was a lot happier. We were all just we were very happy that like my sister found someone that she really really enjoys being with, um, and he equally enjoys being around her, and he likes us, so that's a bonus. You know what's not to like, but he you know he likes us, so it's a good thing. Um, If you were to cut this out and use it, how would you cut it and on what stock? Okay, so I am happy to talk about this. I would normally have used um, like a matte card stock. I did not have any in my stores, in my little like storage area. Um, so I would normally use a, like a matte cardboard. Oh, that, that yellow is not gonna show up there. So I will do that after. We're gonna use white. 
Um, I'm gonna create a little like star because on these like vintage ornaments, you'll always see it has this really nice little star pattern that happens in the center. Um, I so I would have I would have printed it on matte paper. Um, I did not in this case. This case uh, for this one, I ended up using sticker paper and then a thicker piece of just small paper I had. Um, and I used my Cricut to cut it out. So I stuck the thicker paper underneath the sticker so that it cut both at the same time because I figured that would work and it did. Um, so I just had to like line everything up and then I used just a twine to tie it. Um, you can use scissors, you can cut it. I have to figure out how to do edge to edge in in a, on the Cricut and get the border still. Cause I have managed to do it before but I've not used my Cricut much in the last year. So I don't remember how. Um, but a heavier cardstock works really well and a, um, you know, a nice sharp pair of scissors. And if you have options for like silhouette or, you know, or Cricut or whatever, that, that helps a lot. Um, Shannon, your, your Yorkie is six pounds. Name is Bella and has major attitude. Yeah. Ours, he's, he's, he rules the house. We're not exactly sure how he became alpha, but he did. And he gets he gets so grumpy at the at the other two, and it's like they're you you're he gets mad at them for simply existing. Um, let's see for cutting on silhouette or cricket, what do we need to do? Okay, I'm gonna have to like I'm gonna put together like instructions later today, and I will upload them to the folder. So just keep an eye out um, because I will run through how to how to do that because I used the print and cut option. I've never used a silhouette, so I don't exactly know how that one will work. Um, but I gave it a border in the sweater one. I gave a border in um, in Photoshop using the stroke option, and then I exported it and put it into the Cricut Design Space to cut it out. But I feel like there's got to be a way to do a do an edge to edge bleed for it. Um, I just have to figure out how to do that so that it actually reads like where I want it cut without messing too much with the with the bleed. There's probably a way to do it with the offset option, but that's a beta thing in the in the Cricut. So it, I don't know how accurate it is because it takes forever just to get it to work once. must be a Yorkie breed thing. Yeah, I'm like our our big one, she had attitude in that she was just very stubborn um, and she liked to come have arguments with you because she wanted to eat. So she'd just like walk into the living room and stare at you and she'd just start whining and we'd tell her, no, you're not gonna have treats. And then the little one would run up next to her and sit down like, yeah, we, we want treats. Um, or like we'd hear her in the pantry and just there'd be a muffled like, eh. like get out of the pantry. You're not getting food. Um, and she would throw tantrums. But as far as like attitude towards any of us, she was the mediator with the other dogs. And she was just she was the sweetest thing. Yeah, give it a try. I mean, ugly sweaters don't have to look perfect. They really don't. All right, so I'm right now adding these little starbursts and then I'm gonna go in between and add some other little starbursts. Once I get these done, I've got like, not quite 10 minutes, but like six minutes. I can do this. We can do two or we can get the second ornament done. Yeah, the instructions will help. And I like I will I will happily put those put those together. I just have to get through a couple things today and then I will I will get them up and uploaded into the folder. Um, hopefully with like some you know decent diagrams, at least clear enough instructions so that it all makes sense. Shannon says, oh my gosh, I had no idea they were all like that. Terriers are stubborn. We, I grew up with a terrier. Well, I didn't grow up with her. She passed when I was three, but my parents had a Westie when I was born and she was, she was stubborn. 
my parents were teaching her how to potty train and she like they my mom would keep telling her, like on the paper on the paper and so her front paws would be on the paper so by all technicality she was on the paper but she'd just pee on the floor but yeah no they're they're stubborn Let's see what other what other holiday traditions are there that we can we can bounce through real quick. I have a weird tradition. So it's, it's more like a weird habit now. Um, I was in choir all through high school, and you start prepping for Christmas in August. So come August, I'm already itching to listen to Christmas music. Um, so. That is kind of a bad habit I have uh, I have acquired over the years. But I also, when I worked in in-house at an agency slash in a fashion place, um, I, I also had to uh, start Christmas stuff in August. So my brain automatically just defaults from August to wanting to hear, listen to like, you know, Nat King Cole and all those. Um, Stony, thank you. I appreciate that. I love I love the vintage ornaments. I love the ones because they like dip in in the center and they look really pretty. So I'm always a big fan of those. I'm gonna put yeah, I think that'll work. Okay, so I'm gonna redraw this, and I'm just gonna draw these little stars to fit right into these. Into these little things here and guys don't forget like we have there's a full lineup of awesome shows today and this will be going on all week so definitely tune in because there's different things every day and you can learn all kinds of awesome stuff oh that one what happened to you let's try that one again <laughs> Wait, says, wow, August, I'm slow to the holiday cheer, but once I get there, it's hard to stop. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was, I, I'm, I'm getting better about like not jumping into Christmas mode in August anymore, but it was really hard because then the two weeks leading up to Christmas break in high school, every night we were performing at a different place. Um, and then there were two years in high school that we got to be part of the Epcot candlelight processional. Um, and I still remember all of those songs. Like I can hear it. I can, if someone like posts a video of it on any of these like Facebook groups, I'm going to use green for this to outline this here. Um, if anyone posts the videos, I sit there, I'm just like, oh no, it's been like 18 years and I still remember all these songs. And it's because of that, that I know the hallelujah chorus. I think I had a, another thing pop up that I was like, oh, that was always a funny tradition. And I can't remember what it was. Oh, I know what it is. We, so growing up, like we always kept our tree up till um, mid January ish. And so I always thought my parents kept it up through my birthday, you know, at least just through my birthday because I love the Christmas tree. Turns out we kept it up through Ukrainian Christmas or the Epiphany, which is January 6th. So I spent years thinking that I was special and I was not. Uh, let's see, got a couple more seconds. I can just finish this up. Um, Shannon says, we just went and looked at the lights here at the college. It's a big deal here. You walk through and they have little stages of stories. Oh, how fun. We have the, um, we have this thing downtown in Antioch here that it's Dickens Christmas Village. And they put these like mannequins around downtown that are dressed like Dickens characters. And it's supposed to tell the story of uh, of uh, of Christmas Carol. And then there's a guy apparently that'll walk around dressed like Scrooge and give out gold coins or something. It's uh, it's interesting. It's got it's got its own charm. Uh, and as this Facebook group, yeah, like Disney pass holder groups and stuff. I'm no longer a pass holder, but I still lurk in there. Uh, Sarah says, we never skip Thanksgiving. 
especially with listening to the Charlie Brown Thanksgiving soundtrack, but Christmas, you listen to that music all year round. I like you. Um, this makes me want to get an iPad so bad. Do it. Do it. Honestly, I when I switch to an iPad, I don't really draw on paper anymore. I draw only digitally at this point. Um, Sarah says, I used to be a graphic designer at a t-shirt company. So you know all about working on holiday related stuff in the off season. Yeah. My first um, photo shoot at this, at this fashion company I worked for, it was in August and it was Florida. So it was hotter than, than heck. And the poor models had to dress in like the coat, the winter coats and things. And um, they, we had to make fake snow. We had the stuff that you added water to and it like powdered up and it looked like snow. <laughs> But it was it was so hot that you're just like nothing about this feels right. Um, Stoney says choir and mom and band mom here, so I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it happens. Well, we have come we're we're coming to an end, guys. Thank you so much for joining in. This was a lot of fun, and I really hope you also make your own your own ornaments. Um, I would love to see what you make, so don't forget to tag myself at Shauna Parmesan as well as um, hashtag Adobe Live Holidays. So thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your Christmas memories, your holiday memories with me. I really enjoyed reading them. I really enjoyed sharing this time with you all. And I hope you have a wonderful holiday season and I will hopefully see you all soon. Make sure you stick around. There's a lot more programming coming up and I will see you all. I'll hopefully see you all later. I'd love, I'm excited to see what you make. So. Happy holidays. I'll see you all later. Bye.